Hello and welcome to the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Box Markets. It is Wednesday the 1st of March. Starting off with the FTSE, which has uh, continued to bounce off that uh, uptrend line there from October, roughly 78.70 at the moment. Uh, the range between 78.70 and 78.50, end of day close above 78.50, we're looking to the highs, hopefully up towards uh, 81.50 by the end of the month. Obviously that seems rather optimistic at the moment, but we have had a double bounce of the RSI at the neutral 50 level, which can be a continuation signal, and hopefully in this case will be. Below 78.70, the risk is down to the 50-day moving average at 77.70 currently, and obviously testing January support there around the 77.20 level. But at the moment, we look as though we are reasonably strong. On to the DAX, also looking reasonably strong with that uptrend line there from October. We're bouncing off that around 15,200. That's been the key area. Just had one slight dip below that uh, last Thursday, but uh, we've recovered. Uh, initial resistance here towards 15,800, that uh, September resistance line projection. Above that, then the best case scenario over the next four to six weeks up to 16,400. And uh, the RSI bounce off neutral 50 helping as well. Give us a bit more confidence that is a continuation signal. Moving on to the Dow, which has been uh, the uh, odd man out or person out, as you would say these days. Uh, here we've got... Uh, the breakdown below the 50-day moving average, 33,500. The threat of a test of the 200-day moving average now actually rising a bit around the 32,300 area. One would hope that there would be a bounce off that and then we'd then go back up to the top of the range at 34,300. But in the meantime, as I think I said yesterday, below that falling 50-day line, it's probably easier to go for a sell into strength rather than buying the dips until we get down towards that 200-day moving average area. On to Bitcoin, where we've been uh, hoping that this market will be able to stretch ahead, break through the uh, sticky $25,000 resistance and head up to the top of that broadening triangle from June, now pointing as high as 31000 hopefully by the end of this month. Uh, the good news in the near term is that we've had, like the FTSE, a double bounce of the RSI on the neutral 50 level a continuation signal and uh, so far over the course of uh, well basically since early January support has come in above the 50 day moving average on dips which is also normally a strong signal of continuity in a, a bull run or at least a recovery run which is what we've got at the moment. If you're cautious away from an end of day close above 25,000 to target 31,000 on Bitcoin nightmare scenario is that we break the 50 day line and head back down to 20,000. It wouldn't be surprising if there was one kind of one shakeout just before any move to the upside uh, just to uh, kick out the weak hand. So maybe that's something to think about too. On to the stocks and uh, not too many pure gold um, situations in terms of the technicals. Uh, Bluebird is looking good in the sense that we've got the we had uh, the gap higher through the 50 day 50 and 200 day moving averages at the start of the week. We've broken the high of that gap day at 2.2 pence above that. We're looking for 2.8 at the top of the post-summer range for BMV. Only back below 1.8 and the floor of the gap really delaying the upside scenario, which could be much more than uh, 2.8 actually, but uh, looking for that initially. Don't want to get too excited. On to Eco, uh, Eco Atlantic that is uh, here. Shares have spent uh, quite a few months now trying to regroup after that uh, rug pull event that we had in November. Rising trend channel here from November, top of the channel they're heading to 24 pence. Through 24 we're looking for the 200 day line at 27 and then obviously a better recovery through the 30 pence area. But early days yet, just looks as though this is in a recovery mode given the way that uh, the RSI is pushed through neutral 50 and the 50 day moving average is rising. While we're above 20 and the 50 day line, we remain relatively confident of further um, efforts to push higher onto Eternity. And uh, here, just broken that falling wedge, which has been in place in September. Had bullish divergence as well, so an end of day close through around the 7.5 pence level should be enough to allow the shares to try and fill the gap up to 10 pence over the next two to four weeks and hopefully a bit sooner. Uh, the longer we stay above seven, the better in that situation. Ironveld is next, and uh, here you can see similar pattern to uh, the monitor eco. So we've got uh, 
rising trend channel off the floor of the range, uh, 50 day moving average rising, looking for up to 0.45 while we hold above the 50 day line at 0.3 on Iron Veld. Bit of a buzz in IQ AI. Anything with AI, I suppose, these days should be regarded as um, fantastic because there's a chat GPT mania going on at the moment. Unfull gap to the upside at the start of the year for IQ AI, and we've uh, made good on that uh, signal. Sideways consolidation, so we're going up in step fashion, which is also very healthy. End of day club, well, we actually already had a target there at 5.5 pence. We missed it so far by a quarter of a penny, which... Uh, it's obviously uh, slightly disappointing, but uh, no one's perfect. Above five and a half pence, looking for seven and a half pence at that March resistance line projection. Bull argument in place while we hold above post July resistance around the four pence mark. On to likewise, which I uh, don't think that many people look at, but it's just broken its 200 day moving average for the first time since last March, which is nice. Above that, on an end of day close basis, we're looking up to 36 pence at the top of. Um, we well, actually had that uh, uh, July resistance line projection, which is the top of a broadening triangle from that month. And if you look closely, I think you'll see a couple of unfilled gaps to the upside. So that is looking like a very strong setup indeed to get through the 200 day line. Uh, suggests that uh, there won't be any need for a retest. Uh, but at least while we're above uh, the 21 pence level resistance in January, we're looking for 36 on likewise. Happy to meet uh, the uh, powers that be at uh, Marula yesterday, and uh, I think it's been photographed as well. Uh, shares up four and a half pence, four and a half percent rather, was it four and a half pence? But no, four and a half percent. Still looking for ten pence as the initial target. We narrowly missed that uh, last week, nine point six five the peak, but uh, above ten, looking for fourteen at that November resistance line projection. That could happen as soon as. The end of this this month uh, upside certainly about it while we hold above uh, the january resistance there around seven and a half pence above seven and a half looking for 14 ultimately maybe uh, over the coming weeks moving along to um Orisur, which um uh, has broken a line of resistance there from september got a rising 50-day moving average just uh, hugging the 200 day moving average at the moment and they close above that at around nine and a half pence we, we could be heading up to 15 pence at the top of that broadening triangle from back in may upside valid while we hold above the 50 day line nice move on uh, quantum exponential over recent days or at least the last couple of days here we've broken the 200 day moving average uh, at uh, two and a quarter pence quite easily above that looking for 3.8 pence at the top of that broadening uh, triangle on the daily chart from back in May. But the upside certainly valid while we're, uh, or the upside idea certainly valid while we hold above two and a quarter and the 200 day line. On to Rearbold, which has uh, been a bit sluggish of late, but uh, we are still holding above the 50 day moving average, which is now rising around 0.21. Above that, we're looking for the 200 day line around 0.27 basically at the top of the post-October range on the share. So it would be surprising now if there was any price action back below that rising 50-day moving average. Moving along to Rock4, which um, is uh, just revisiting yesterday's uh, break of that 200-day moving average. It's second go, really. We had an unfilled gap to the upside earlier in uh, February. And uh, above the 50 day moving average, at 7 pence looking for as high as 9 and 3 quarter pence at the top of that May broadening triangle. Finishing off with Valerix, uh, which um, we uh, saw the uh, bear trap there from below 10 pence and the shares making good on that uh, particular bear trap situation. Uh, the lows of the recent days at the 50 day moving average, which is now rising, which is very pleasant. RSI through the 50 neutral 50 level as well. So look for 16 pence over the next few weeks, certainly by the end of this month, while we hold above. 10 pence zone. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.